everybody. Welcome to the Metal Leak. I'm John, as always, but not as always. I'm on camera. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Uh, this is, yeah, a brand new series called Top 10 Thursdays, which, spoiler alerts, is going to be a bunch of top 10 lists on Thursdays. The first one here is going to be uh, the top 10 mythics and or rares that I want to open and play with uh, at a draft. I'll come up with a shorter name for the video at some point. Starting right away at number 10 is Veteran Warleader. Veteran Warleader is uh, not quite the red-white ally that I want it to be. Red-white seems to be the best ally color combination, although it does look like white X can be the ally deck if it wants to. And this seems to be the one that fuels the green-white one. Being able to tap your allies to give a, a whole host of different abilities seems really cool. You have to tap those abilities, which means they're not going to be attacking, but simply by existing, they're going to make Veteran Warleader bigger. So I definitely want to open Veteran Warleader, snap pick it, and uh, go green-white. Next up at number nine is Felidar Sovereign. Uh, I love myself some alternate win conditions. I have one with an Azor's Elocutors. I have one with, uh, I, I guess everybody's one with Infect. Uh, but I have one with alternate win conditions. It always feels really fun and really good. And uh, potentially getting to 40 life seems like a, a good goal for me. And of course, having a 4-6 Vigilance Lifelinker is really going to help you get there. Uh, hopefully you haven't lost a bunch of life by the time this comes down. Number 8 is Void Winnower. Void Winnower I trashed on the set review. I, uh, I, I very disparagingly referred to it as a Hearthstone card. It's very random. It... it randomly hoses part of your opponent's deck and uh, randomly doesn't the other part of the deck. So I'm not a big fan of Void Winnower as a consistent card, but of course this is the top 10 list that I want to open and play with, uh, not necessarily from a spiky, competitive, I'm going to win perspective, but more from a I want to have some fun and I want to see how these cards play, say that I played with them, and then probably not touch them again. Not all the cards are like that, not all the cards are like that, but... Uh, Void Winnower is certainly one of them. Next up is Kiora, Master of Depths. The only reason that Kiora is this low on the list is because I had her at the pre-release. I've already played with her, and surprise, surprise, she's pretty solid. She's pretty good. She does what she needs to do. Uh, I ultimated her a couple of times. I both times had to explain, no, I don't get infinite octopuses as much as I want them. Uh, I only get three. But uh, yeah, she's great. She's fantastic. She does what she needs to do. I'd love to open and play with her again. Uh, but I already have, so she's down here at number eight, by which I mean number seven. Number six, we have Zada, Hedron Grinder. I also opened Zada at a pre-release. Unfortunately, I couldn't play red. It was the same one that I opened Kiora. So I didn't get a chance to play with Zada, but she looks really fun. I think, of course, you have to build around her. You need to make sure that you have a decent number of creatures that are low enough cost that they're going to be on the board with her, and you have to have a, a, a definite non-zero amount of sure strikes and... Uh, uh, other single-target pump spells like that. But I don't think it would be that hard, especially in red-white. Get some uh, Lithomancer's Focuses, get some Sure Strikes, stuff like that, and you're going to be uh, uh, pretty happy with Zada, I think. Giving your entire team a pump is awesome. You basically get to build your own Overrun for significantly less mana than Overrun costs. But Zada looks really fun. I would happily first pick her, especially being mono-colored. That's going to uh, make deck building a lot easier because I could be red whatever and still play her. Next up at number five, we have Drana, Liberator of Malakir. Drana seems really fun as well. A 2-3 first strike flyer for three is just solid. Anyways, I would play that all the time. The fact that she attacks and then if she deals damage to the player, she fills the board of uh, the rest of your attackers with plus one, plus one counters before most of them, if not all of them, will have dealt damage is pretty good. This was another common rule call that I had to do at the pre-release. I had to uh, explain to people, no, Drana deals damage in something called the first strike combat step. And then the triggers happen, and then you move on to the regular combat damage step. Um, people have issues figuring that out. Uh, I'm not sure why. I assume duels of the Planeswalkers and whatnot kind of skips over the first strike combat step. Uh, as a, an explicitly stated step, which kind of confuses people. But Drana makes full use of that first strike combat step and the timing to get her trigger to uh, do some pretty dirty things. So uh, I'm pretty happy to open her and play uh, black anything, really. Preferably a little bit aggressive, though. Number four, we have From Beyond. From Beyond, of course, is this set's Awakening Zone. Awakening Zone cost one less from From Beyond, uh, and it made an 01 Eldrazi spawn. Blah, 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 you know the rest. 
It also didn't sack to search up the Eldrazi that you wanted once you had enough uh, Scions. I saw this used on my opponent's board a couple of times to uh, some pretty good effect. A, it fills up the board with just chump blockers like crazy, and they're actually legitimate threats. If they get ahead of you, you know, if you have two or three creatures and they're starting to get five, six, seven Eldrazi Scions, they can just swing with all of them. Some will die, sure, but they're going to get through for some damage. They are real threats. Add in a Ruination Guide, and it just goes crazy, and from beyond can just be considered a, a sort of a, a threat producer. It, it makes threats, completely ignoring the fact that it super, super ramps into Eldrazi. Um, I, I like that this has a lot of uh, pathways that you can go. You can take this down the ramp plan, and you probably should, especially given the second ability of From Beyond, but you can just make this into a threat uh, thing. You can add in white and make this uh, uh, kind of a retreat to Ameria, anthem, run over them deck. Uh, looks really fun. I like the different possibilities that can go there. I'd love to draft it a couple of times just to try out both possibilities. Uh, and see where we go. But number three, number four, from beyond. Number three, for real this time, is Gideon, ally of Zendikar. Gideon looks so good. So, so, so good. I saw a couple of them open at the pre-release. Uh, I never caught the games where he was being played, though. I luckily didn't have to play against him. Uh, but he seems really solid. Just a 5-5 indestructible creature is great. If you happen to be an ally deck, being able to get those allies through is going to be solid. Uh, getting multiple rally triggers every turn. Well, not multiple every turn, but Every turn, multiple throughout the game, is going to be really good off of his zero. And his ultimate is fine. Maybe his ultimate goes in the From Beyond deck that I'm talking about, where you uh, uh, get at least one Anthem, and hey, if you can plus one him, and for some reason the game goes really, really long, you could, of course, stack those Anthems to uh, some pretty powerful effect. But number three, Gideon, ally of Zendikar. Number two, we've got the other Planeswalker of the set, Obnixilis Reignited. Obnixilis, I saw at the pre-release as well. A few people opened him. There was a, a promo Obnixilis as well opened. And I did play against him once. And I beat him no problem. Now that was partially due some, to some misplays of my opponents. Uh, uh, not noticing I had a flyer, which was able to just easily go over top and kill Obnixilis. Uh, and the second time I was at a high enough amount of mana that I was able to just scour from existence it. Um, but it's a real threat. It, it's something that I don't want to see on the other side of the board if I don't have an answer right away. Uh, so much card advantage from his plus one. Uh, being able to minus three and kill a creature is huge. Uh, the ultimate, you almost don't even have to care about. He's just so good on the first and second abilities. Uh, Obnixilis looks just awesome. I, I super want to open one and uh, snap pick it, go into black, probably blue-black control because... It's what I like to play a lot of the times, and he fits in it quite nicely. Finally, at number one, I'm sure you all know what it is, because it would not not be on this list, is Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Ulamog seems just awesome. Ulamog is a 10-10 for 10. That's cool. It's indestructible. That's even cooler. And when he attacks, he mills probably your opponent's entire library. Probably the entire damn thing in one single attack. So you're not going to win by damage on Ulamog, because they're probably going to chump block it, but you're going to win by them not being able to draw the next turn. I actually had to face Ulamog a single time at the pre-release. Uh, he was played on turn whatever. I had 19 cards left in my deck as my opponent had me count, just to make sure. And I sat there staring and realized that I had a Drowner of Hope in hand. I was able to play it, sack the two Scions that it made to tap Ulamog and another creature, and get in for the lethal damage that I needed. Otherwise, I would have been toast. Ulamog just seems awesome. You, of course, have to be in the deck that wants to play him, the deck that can play him, uh, which, of course, is going to probably be Green Ramp, uh, unless you somehow have a large number of Eldrazi Scions in blue and black, maybe blue and red, but green is really where you're going to be able to go off with this guy. Uh, opening him in pack 2 and pack 3 is going to hurt, because unless I'm already in that deck, it's going to really be hard to play him. Uh, I play at a fairly casual level FNM for my drafts, so I'll probably take him for value. I'm not going to pass him, um, but it's going to hurt getting him in those packs and knowing that I probably can't play him. Uh, but for pack one, pick one, boy, am I going to be happy opening this guy, picking him, and forcing Green Ramp. So that's going to wrap it up for the very first Top 10 Thursday, the Top 10 Mythics and or Rares that I most want to pick and play in draft this coming weekend and then for the next few weeks. Now I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear down in the comments below, what did I miss? What do you most want to play with? Is there something in this top 10 of mine that you really, really, really want to open and give a shot and see how it works with? 
either because of a competitive, it's awesome kind of perspective or because of a, hey, this is hilarious and uh, awesome in that way, you know, Spike versus Timmy versus Johnny kind of perspectives here. Let me know in the comments below what should have been on this list that I didn't include. As well, I want to hear from you guys what top 10 lists you want to hear in the future. I have a large queue set up of potential top 10 lists coming up. Uh, anything ranging from top 10 draft formats that I've played, there's many I haven't, uh, top 10 slivers, top 10, uh, yes, it's going to be coming, cards that I was miserably wrong on in my set draft, or set review, uh, top 10 best dressed characters in Magic, you name it, let me know what top 10 list you want to see, and I will throw them into my queue for the future. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Leak. You've already found me here on YouTube. You've got the comments section down below. As I said, make use of that for those reasons that I suggested, or for whatever reason you want, uh, but make use of that. As well, you should click those little thumbs up icons. That lets me know that you like the videos. That lets the world know that you like the videos and keeps my videos rising up through the ranks. Finally, if you haven't subscribed, you should. There's a button below each video right down there somewhere. There's one in the outro of this video and every video. And clicking that will keep you up to date on all the latest crack pack Tuesdays, Wacky Wednesdays, Spiky Saturdays, and now Top 10 Thursdays, as well as all of the other videos that pop up here and or there. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you all next time.